Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back over on our YouTube account. We have a ton of stuff going on, including some events. So we're gonna have to get some of those. We know the Misty Valley is up. We have a lot of stuff that is coming with the fifth anniversary. We know Eugene is gonna be available on Tuesday in the shop in, or in the um, guild store. He is still gonna be there, but he's gonna be available to summon within the Stargazer. Also gonna be available to summon with those time emblems. So it's gonna be interesting to see exactly how effective or how he's gonna work in conjunction with Gavis. And again, we know they both kind of go together. So it's gonna be interesting to see exactly how it is gonna look, what it's gonna look like. So we'll do some summons in here. But again, there is so much going through here. What's going on? Vlad is here. Laura Paco is here as well. Venom, thank you guys for joining me for the stream. Um, Again, we have so much going on in AFK Arena. Um, if you caught the video last night, that's why we were kind of talking about making sure that we get all of this done and we're really being competitive on one account. Like I said, with AFK Journey, we are only doing one account and we are gonna stay to one account. Even in AFK Arena, now we are down to just one account because we wanna be competitive within the account that we're playing on a regular basis and making sure not only that we're not splitting time, but we're not splitting resources as well. Now, as you can see, they've been offline for four days. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna terminate the relationship. Unfortunately, it seems a lot of players are going AFK um, in a, a extended amount of time. What's going on anchors here, Ariel Grumpy as well. Again, thank you guys for joining me. Let's go through and talk about Eugene for a minute. So as of right now, majority of players have Eugene built up as you see right here. So we do have them at Mythic Plus. We have two additional copies. Now we know through the event that we have going on with the fifth anniversary, they're giving you one free copy, which means that all of the players should have Eugene ascended at this point, which means that we're only gonna have to get him through the Stargazer. We're not gonna have you to use those time emblems. Now, again, there are a lot of rumors. If you have questions about the video that I put out for the rumors, it seems like there might be a new faction. It seems like there's two more Awakened Heroes that are already in the queue as well as some collaborations and some crossovers with the fifth anniversary, which is kind of crazy because that means we have a ton of stuff going on. What's going on, Token? And Sensei is here as well. But like I was saying with our events, we're gonna have to go through here. Circus Tour, we'll hop this out. We'll do the Magician's Hat. Now for the Spire, a lot of players said that they've been going through the Spire kind of on a regular basis. It is really a game mode that you're not gonna finish in just a minute or two. It's gonna take a couple days and that is by design. A lot of players said that the boss was very, very hard or they cannot defeat the boss. Wait a day or two, hop in there. You'll be able to defeat the boss once you stack a bunch more of um, the essence essentially to build up the runes that are in there, the relics that are in there. It's gonna be pretty easy to go in. What's going on, Yoshi? As in the four factions or moving along of like a celestial hypo. So that is the question, Connor. So a lot of players, and if you're familiar, and a lot of players were kind of notating a couple different games, um, that there's all almost like a crossover faction, like a hybrid faction between them. I don't know exactly if what they're thinking, if it's gonna be kind of a fifth primary faction, and they're saying it's the, the Drenok, 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 a D-R-A-N-I-C, which again, Names are only placeholders. Even now it shows that all the new Awakened heroes are light bearer heroes through the day to mind, which means they haven't set the names in there. They haven't set the factions in there. They haven't set a lot of stuff to build out the heroes. But again, it seems like it's all, almost gonna be a cross faction, which I don't know if they're gonna be replacing the dimensional heroes. I know again, a lot of players said that there's a few games that kind of have that kind of, of classification or that specification where it is kind of a crossover between the different ones. Again, rumor is, Connor, it's going to be entirely new um, to, to see. So there is going to be essentially an eighth classification of heroes within AFK Arena, which again is going to be pretty, pretty interesting to see how that's going to work, exactly what that's going to look like. Now, I know, like I was saying, we have the Misty Valley to go through. We have the Babbling Brook. I think that is still up. There's a lot of stuff we still have to do in here and also staying up with the collections. Now, of course, looking at the Abyssal Expedition that we just finished, you have to stay up on the collections. Even if you're going in here, you have to farm your seven attempts every single week. It is imperative that you get collections. This was probably one of the biggest game changers within AFK Arena was trying to build out collections. And I know overall, it's gonna take you a while even here, we're at 72 um, Mythic that we essentially used, trying to get to that 80 to guarantee that buff up. That way we can actually build them out a little bit further. 
What's going on, Yellow? And Joseph is here as well. Do they count the elf as a wilder? Um, I believe so. I, I believe they do. The real question, are they going to have a tower? Yeah. Are they going to have a tower? That is a real question. Um, still waiting on dimensional tower. As you can see right here, we've been accumulating some of these. But overall, again, it's going to be just a matter of time. If you can't take the boss down that you can based on building up these runes. We've literally just been stockpiling everything, but we've gotten all the resources out of there. The Vault of Time is done. The Treasure Scramble, I think at this point we came in 65, but season is over for the Treasure Scramble. So we're completing and finishing out some of these events to make room essentially for new events that are gonna be coming down. I don't know what's going on with AFK Arena, it's not scrolling. Um, Temple Rift at this point is done. Hero Swap, I might swap a hero. Haven't really determined if I'm going to. Uh, Temple Rift again is done as well. But looking in here, Bountiful Trials, I believe this is just going to be diamonds to really go through here. Um, currently pushing AFK Journey stage while listening. Yeah, AFK Journey is a, a pretty interesting game. And a lot of players, and I, I'm really concerned, and I think we already finished this out as well. So one of the big things with AFK Journey is it seems like a lot of players are getting stuck when it comes to Essence. Now that of course is feedback that we've gave, given to the dev team, um, making sure that they are going through and there's there has to be more ways to get essence. It's literally, we're gaining at the AFK rewards that we're at within Journey, we're getting a level every single day. So that is going to have to be um, kind of changed a little. What's going on that one guy? Uh, Jeff the Egg is here as well as Vazder. Uh, what collab do you think would be next? That's a question. So with the collaborations, if you guys took the survey, there was about, I think eight, if I remember correctly, there was about eight different um, collaborations that they were kind of looking at from the survey. So I don't know the results of the survey at this time, um, but, but there's so many different collaborations that I feel like could be super effective in a bunch of different game modes. Um, this one we're gonna do and run through very easy. This allows me to answer questions that you might have about AFK Arena because this is just literally gonna be kind of the auto run in here, um, maximizing everything. Yeah, like I said, there, there's a lot of, and, and Ariel, that's what I was thinking. Wukong for Tharno, uh, Thanos, um, or Tarnos, um, again, I, I don't know. I know a lot of players, and look at that guys, we already have a new subscriber, Thrifted Threads Outfitters. Thank you for subbing to the channel. Yeah, I, I was thinking of that, but I don't know if there's really gonna be an effectiveness because essentially, if we do the swap, so if I swap Wukong for um, Tarnos, I'm not gonna have the ability to get those extra copies of Wukong, which means without getting those extra copies of Wukongs, um, I'm not gonna be able to swap because right now we swapped for Kelthin and we actually got two free copies of Kelthin out of the swap that we did, which again, those would kind of go away if I did the swap. I don't, I don't know, Ariel, if I want to do that. Who should I get next, Leica or Belinda? Because um, Belinda, we're not seeing SS. I would go with Leica. The thing with Belinda is there's a point where Belinda's damage is going to drop off. That is something to remember, Jeff, is Belinda is now going on the second year old. Um, we know Lucius came out. We don't know what's coming out with the other three Awakened Heroes that we're gonna get this year, plus the collaborations that are coming out. So there might be a time where Belinda starts losing her footing and honestly, we're starting to kind of see that a little bit as it sits today, that Belinda is not the primary damage dealer in all of the formations. We are kind of seeing her again, kind of phased out a little bit. And I feel like big picture three to six months, Jeff, you might see her phased out even more um, just with the effectiveness in formations. Again, I think she's still gonna be used, but worst case scenario, if you don't have Belinda, um, even if you don't have Leica, you can go ahead and borrow them if you go ahead and merc it, you're mercing it for literally the one single game mode that we're still seeing. Now, Belinda also is very prevalent when it comes to the treasure scramble. But really in that game mode, um, you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt because the treasure scramble, when you're running seven teams, you're getting so far down the list of heroes in AFK arena, um, th there's gonna be a point that they're being used. What's going on, Bobo? And Marvin is here as well. One copy away from Eugene. Sensi, that's where you wanna be. Exactly, one, Um. yeah, I, I, I want Thanos. That's it, I want it. The, the collaboration needs to be Marvel. We need Thanos in here, just like Ainz. Snaps his fingers, the, the whole entire world ends. This one we need Setrana and we need Orthos. 
So let's drop those two in. Now, Cetrana, of course, used to be used once upon a time. Same with Orthos. Unfortunately, even thinking of the heroes that are currently in the shop, um, Orthos used to be used a lot in a bunch of different formations. As of now, not really being used at all. Who's the best to stargaze after Liberta, Lucila, and Lavatoon? Um, Damia. Thrifted, you have to get Damia. Damia and Lavatoon are kind of interchangeable for the second one, um, but Liberta is primary number one, followed by Damia and Lavatoon are primary number either two or three. And then Lucila comes in at number four, Thrifted. That is the way you want to build them. And again, utility wise, they are heroes that are used in pretty much every single formation. In AFK Arena, they are a big, big priority to build out because they're just broken. They're they're absolutely broken uh, heroes. Who should I engrave to 60? Naruko, Trishia, Jerome, or Aethys? Um, the 60 out of there, I would probably go with Jerome. The reason being Jerome, I know the PvP aspect, but Jerome still does fall in the SSS class. Um, Aethys does well, but doesn't really need the 60. Naruko, again, does well and could do well with the 60, doesn't really need it. Um, Trishia is one uh, that I feel like doesn't have a lot of utility anymore. We're starting to see Trishia, similar to other heroes, that are starting to lose a little bit of the footing in there. And I feel like, again, that's probably, we're, we're gonna see more of that continued as we continue building out these heroes. Um, Awaken Sophia or Laika, Personally, I, I like Laika out of those two because Laika's utility. Sophia still does work well because she's support. That, that's something to remember, Art, is when you look at Sophia and you look at Solus, because they are support heroes, they're built a little bit different. But when you look at utility-wise, Laika is used a couple more places where Sophia has some pretty good options in there if you want to go ahead and change those out. Um, it, it's, it's interesting to see how they work. So no... No warriors or mages. So let's drop out our team here. So we have no warriors, no mages. Let's go tank and see how we can do with the tanking combination in there. Yeah, like I said, I like Jerome. Um, Naruko will work well. And of course, Aethys, again, doesn't really need it, but would work well in there. I already have Ulna, Zorat, Damia, and Vithiel. Um, Thrifted, if you have all those, you might just wait. And honestly, because again, thinking utility-wise with all the heroes in there, I mean, if you have Liberta, Lucila, Lavatune, Damia, and Vithiel, um, yeah, I, I mean, mo most of them are the ones that we're using. Even looking, what do we have, Maulers in here? But let me let me take a look and see kind of what we got. So we're at the Maulers. We'll drop in some Maulers, and then of course we'll put in Athelia. Because even thinking, again, kind of utility-wise with the heroes in here. So again, looking at um, utility-wise. So we have Liberta, um, Damia absolutely being used. Vithio being used. Ulna still being used. When we start getting in here, Melkri is kind of niche. Unfortunately, even looking here, not really used the original version of Taylene anymore. The twins, again, kind of niche in a formation here or there. Rest of them not really used. Even looking over here, we see Lucila and Lavatune being used a ton of different places. Mortis, sometimes not really too many places. Um, Kinesa and Rook would probably be one that might want to be built. Again, the utility of the hero not super high anymore. But the rest of them, once you get probably six to eight Celestials and Hypos built, there's not a huge driving factor to who else do you need. Majority of formations, you're not going to be using them. Yeah, it, it might be saving mats for Eugene. It might be saving mats because even looking at Kelton, now we built out Kelton a little bit. All heroes must be the same class. We built out Kelton a little bit, but overall, um, not seeing a ton of utility with Kelton. I, I feel like he's going to be a hero that is either very, very short-lived or he's going to be a hero that we're going to see actually pop up later in AFK Arena. And that could also mean that it goes hand in hand with future releases. Again, Dimensional Heroes, Awakened Heroes. There could be some heroes in the future that essentially are going to make and increase the utility of Kelthin. But as of right now, again, even though I built him, I feel like we're not seeing a ton of utility for Kelthin. And again, I wouldn't invest him at this point until we see exactly where he is. Uh, building Demio was the best hero I built aside from Awakened Ethereum. Yes. Absolutely, Bobo. Damia's broken. 
If you ran Damia, especially in the Abyssal Expedition, it was really um, one of the game-changing heroes. What do we need? Kazard and Dresden here. Absolutely was, was probably the biggest game-changing hero that we had in AFK Arena um, was Damia. Damio had the ability to cheat death, so keeping the team alive when the primary boss, when the Sky Serpent was doing damage, Damia with a specific collection, which was the plus two Mahira, kept the entire team alive for the full minute 30, allowing you to really maximize damage in all of the game modes, which again was kind of crazy. The front line must be Warrior, and we're looking at Graveborn. So let's do Graveborn Warriors. And look at that, that that's pretty sad for our Graveborns. But that's okay, because we'll put the Graveborns in here, and we'll just swap a few more in here. But yeah, overall, Damia was super effective in there. And mats for Eugene, yes. Craze, I would say mats for Eugene are going to be really, really important. Again, we've seen Eugene used in a capacity that is very limited because we don't have furniture, because we don't have engraving. I feel like when Eugene is going to be fully unleashed, we're going to see Eugene built, and we're going to see Eugene in a lot of different content. And it, and again, it, it seems like that's exactly what we're going for and what they were going for when it comes to the effectiveness of the hero. I don't know what to do. Should I swap now Wukong for Lava Tune or wait and get more copies of Wukong from Labyrinth Store, get as many stars of Wukong and then swap them for Lava Tune? Um, you can really do it either way. The thing is, Legend, if you don't have Lava Tune, um, you're, you're changing up a lot of the teams. Lava Tune is one of the heroes that can really make or break a formation. Having Lava Tune built out works exceptionally well, which is the reason why we say, you know, Lava Tune is one of the absolute top priority heroes to build because Lava Tune is a game changer in a lot of different ways in a lot of different formations. Honestly, it's not going to be that big if you don't swap Wukong. And what you could do is swap Wukong to Lava Tune. So you have your Lava Tune, you're set there. And then go ahead and just build up Wukong again. That way you have them. Is Olgas still viable? Very niche. And again, you, you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Um, is it Akar? Um, you have to take it with a grain of salt because if you're coming into AFK Arena, and I think we can do all three days, you, you have to think is if you have all of the heroes built, it's a little bit different than the viability of having Olgath. So I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. So the, here we're pretty much done. This stays set. We can actually swap this with the most recent one. I'm actually going to go Aethys in here just because I like the hero and actually has some utility. But overall, when you think big picture of having Olgath, is Olgath still viable? Um, Olgath is viable in a couple different places as a burst damage dealer, which is where we're seeing him in the Nightmare Corridor. But if you don't have him built, there's a couple supplements in there. He was ran, of course, with the Awakened version of Atria. As of now, we're not seeing it really used as much as we did once upon a time. So would I build Olgath as of today? Probably not for a one-off niche formation is really all that we're going to see. Um, it, it's unfortunate, but again, as the power creep continues, as we're getting stronger and stronger heroes, a lot of the older ones are just seeing a lot of less utility in there. Well, what's going on, Jordan? And John is here as well as Ro Roby. Roby is here. Any tips for the Mauler Tower? Um, borrow heroes. So Ivan, the Mauler Tower really requires two big, big heroes if you want to make progression. Number one is Brutus. That is the reason why I haven't swapped the Awakened version of Brutus. Brutus is a monster when it comes to the tower. And then, of course, the Awakened version of Sophia. But when you look at other heroes that do incredibly well, um, Crisio, Naruko, and Kren will do very, very well in the towers. When you start getting to multiple game modes, we've actually gotten to the point with running Salakai, running a couple different heroes, that the tower isn't as difficult as possible or as it once was, but it also depends if you're going in there and you're running multiple teams. Now, of course, historically, the Maulers have been and still continue to be the absolute weakest faction in AFK Arena, which means for a majority of players similar to mine, the Mauler tower is usually the absolute lowest because it is the most difficult tower to actually grind through. Takes an incredible amount of time to get through there, and literally, it is a grind. It is the biggest grind. So again, if you can borrow a hero, and that's what a lot of players do, is when you come in here and looking at borrowing, 
even if you're just progressing, you know, one or two floors on a regular basis, it's going to make a difference because essentially you're still making progression. Once we do get a mauler, and I'm thinking even the next Awakened Hero could be a mauler hero. So once we go ahead and get that mauler hero, chances are we're going to have the ability to really crush the mauler tower with a fully built Awakened Mauler. Um, that'll be coming out pretty soon. You think we could swap Eugene next year? Maybe. Depends, Connor, if Eugene is still going to be uh, well worth it. After I'm finished summoning for Awakened Shamira, who should I build? I have Lucius, Laika, Athelia. Um, if you have Shamira, um, you have Lucius, Laika, Athelia. Um, yeah, Shamira is good. Lucius is good. Again, Belinda is still seeing a little bit of utility. One thing I would kind of wait, Bobo, is if you're if you're not looking now, once you finish the awakened version of Shamira, I would pause and see what's coming. So essentially sitting on some emblems are not a bad idea. Even here, we have 500 time emblems. We're sitting on these really waiting to see what is coming down the pipeline. Because again, data mine says there are two awakened heroes that are already built, which knowing AFK arena takes about six months. Six months is the regular ramp up time for them to complete heroes. So you have to think six months, they already have the next 12 heroes in the works, so we know who is coming and really having the ability not only for the time emblems to get the copies that you need, but having the furniture scrolls, even having the emblems, having enough materials to essentially build out the hero when the hero is released is going to make a really big difference. Uh, that's what I did. I swapped five star Wukong for Lava Tune token. That is a good, good swap. Again, looking at Lucila um, or Liberta, looking at uh, Lava Tune, looking at Damia, looking at Lucila, very, very strong, good to swap. Uh, one copy is enough to swap. Yeah, if you only have one copy, yep, you could swap. How many copies of Damia, Damia can I get as free to play from the Magician's Hat? Free to play one. <laughs> so unfortunately, if you guys are familiar with the events in AFK Arena, the Magician's Hat, when you look at the exchange, um, you have enough for one. So they only give you enough for one. So you can literally pull one single copy of Damia out of here. And that is it. Based on the 90 here, I believe we get 130, 140, if I remember correctly. Um, meaning you don't have enough as free to play to pull two copies. That's it. You only get the very, very bare minimum. In every event that we've actually done, they usually only give you the ability to pull one and only one, which again, this one is the exact same. It, it rings true. You can only get one. Now again, free to play, yes, you can get one. But you want to keep that in mind is because with the Stargazer, you can use scrolls, you can use diamonds. We get a lot of diamonds that we really go in a lot of diamonds that we get. So it might be even beneficial to skip the heroes. And a lot of players do skip the heroes in their entirety. Um, and they actually go in here and they just get resources versus getting the heroes. Uh, what collection do I have for Damia? So Damia is actually pretty cheese broke. So if you have this one, so this is the one that I run on Damia. Now, the big thing with this one is having the plus two skill level, which I know for a lot of players is pretty hard. But right here, when the holder takes single instance damage that exceeds 15% of the max health, they sacrifice minions. So as bosses get stronger, Damia will still be able to stay alive. In turn, Damia will keep the entire team alive based on this, because also based on this is when they essentially, this is what keeps the team up because she can't take enough damage. If you at least have a hero on the team that can heal up Damia, or she shields or heals herself, she can stay alive essentially forever, which is pretty broken based on, on the collection. Does Thor need engraving? No, he does not need engraving at all, Ali. I do not recommend, and I know Thorn, I engraved when he was released. Does he need the furniture? Furniture helps. Uh, furniture does help Thorin. Um, for the example right here, recovers the energy. So of course, in some modes where if you're not having enough energy to get that second ult out of there, the furniture is what brings it, where a lot of players will say the Thorin cheese doesn't work. The Thorin cheese, it's because it's missing the nine of nine furniture for the energy recovery. Is it required? No, but does it help a lot? Yes, it absolutely does, Ali, to get the furniture. And then of course, for the signature item, um, getting a 30 is really all that you need. Do not get the 40. There's no reason to get the 40. Again, a lot of players have said building up the plus 40 on Thorin um, didn't work. It actually broke the Thorin comp when you're copying formations and stuff like that. 
It was incredibly broken and it didn't work as players essentially thought it was going to. It didn't. Um, who's your next 40 SI going to be? So I went through and I have a lot of 40 SIs. I thought about going in. Now, if you look, guys, we have Belinda, we have Athelia, we have um, Leica already built to a 40. I have Brutus to a 40. We have Liberta, we have Lucius, we have right here with um, Shamira, and I have Damia, and I do have right here with Rem. Those are pretty much the primary ones that I want to take to a 40. We have what? One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine heroes at a plus 40 signature item. There's a couple you could bring in. And, and the question of the signature item is, I usually focus it on my damage dealers. That way we can actually amp up the damage. But when you think big picture, there's a lot of heroes and a majority of heroes don't even need the plus 40. They will work effectively in the plus 30 capacity. It is just having the ability to really push the envelope getting to that plus 40 is the reason why I built them out, is to be competitive. That, that again, is the really, really the big part of why I push those out, is when you look at the Curse Realm, the Nightmare Corridor, and the Treasure Scramble, to be competitive, you need higher engraving, you need higher signature items, you need higher pretty much everything, again, for the competitive nature of the game, game mode. Um, a lot of people are talking about baits. Baits in the game mode, yes, you entirely, you want to get baits in the game mode if, and I always say this, um, if you don't have a lot of different parts built out or if you don't have essentially your baits built up to a certain point, you want to make sure, and I think Solus, you have to put in here, this formation, well, in general, players are not liking the game mode. They're not liking the, the legendary summons that we have in here or how this game mode essentially works because it's kind of a pain in the butt because you have this old school original Solus that you cannot take out. A lot of players have been running through these and they cannot finish them, which kind of sucks. And I, I can't believe they kind of did it like this, but you can see even in here based in the game mode, um, it, it's insane. It's insane trying to get through a lot of different game modes, literally to, to kill one chest in here. You, they they amp up the damage in these for the, the elite summons or the elite um, build in here. And of course, now you can see those heroes are dead. That is right. And this is, again, why so many players are not liking this game mode at all. It's a pain in the butt. Every time I go through here, and I know we could change up some pets, we could do a couple things, but a lot of players will actually just turn off the four times speed because of how difficult these game modes are. Again, it's literally, it's just a pain in the butt. What is going on, Jack? Hope you guys are doing good on this Sunday. Um, who should I build the SI40, Jerome or Aethys? Aethys is a really big one. That makes a big difference, Venom. Uh, deals trillions of damage in the Twisted Realm because of the build Demia. Yes, yeah, the Demia being built is huge, guys. I, I always say it. When you look at some of the heroes that literally changed AFK Arena, um, Demia is one. Damia is absolutely one that is pretty broken in a lot of different game modes. And she really did change AFK Arena. And it, you know, it, it's been proven. Should I go for cores over food? It's hard quiz because it depends what your account needs. That's really the big thing. Oh, so we only get 110 in there. So if you're spending 90, yeah, that's all you get. Is it is it rumored dimensional heroes coming anytime soon? Yes. So that is what Dolly is talking about, is that we're going to have a lot of heroes coming over. Rumor is those are going to be dimensional heroes, Ivan, that are coming over um, pretty shortly. So we could see some of those dimensional heroes very, very shortly, which again, that's kind of the collaboration. I think they're going to wrap it up with the collaboration with the fifth anniversary. I feel like they're going to put a ton of, just a ton of content together which again is, is pretty cool to see that that's how they're doing it. But rumor is yes, dimensionals are coming. That's rough, not worth uh, over baiting them. Yeah, like I said, with the, with the baits, a lot of players do wanna go in and do wanna get the bait. Um, the bait, again, if you don't have the, the plus 12 or the 12, level 12 resonating crystals or the, or the beast resonance, I would do the bait. And again, when we continue getting more beasts, that's the big thing to really keep in mind is getting more beasts. And of course, we know more beasts are gonna be coming down the pipeline. With more beasts, of course, means that 
We are gonna have a lot more abilities. We're gonna have a lot more skills in a bunch of different places. Getting the beast resonance up to 12 and then essentially getting it up to 18 over time is a game changer. It is such a big, big game changer in AFK Arena. I underestimated the beasts when we actually built them earlier. And since then I went through, I built all the beasts, I got to 18 resonance. Literally, it, it is a massive, massive game changer when you're going through there. And I'm kind of, kind of going through here, um, looking at this because I think we have to go back. I'm, try, I'm trying to think, it's been a long time since we did the Babbling Brook. So there we go, so something is moving in the bushes. There we go, so we got monsters and I think this is where we lose. I think this is a combat. So I'm gonna drop everybody out of here. I'm just gonna drop in, let's say, oh, we're, we're gonna leave her in by herself because I can't take her out. Because again, I think this is one that we lose. There we go, so I gotta find another way to get out of here. And look at that, the Wilder Youth just literally killed everybody, which was awesome. So we can go ahead, we can drink from the spring. Boom, we're well rested in the botanist hut. And there is Orin, which we know this of course was the awakened version of Solus. When we got her, let's get going. There we go, so drink the spring. And then I believe we come through, is it up here? I think it might be up here that we go through this tunnel. Um, what the awaken, what's good? Uh, yeah, Aeth Aethis I like, but awaken celestial hypo first. I don't know, Hi, it's gonna be interesting to see for AFK journey, I have Supreme plus. Celia, Odie, Smoking, that's crazy. Thrifted, that is insane that you have all of those heroes already Supreme Plus. That is massive. Working on Thor and Rainier. Um, who's the next big one? Rainier. Rainier is the big one. Yeah, Vela works incredibly well too. Um, Scarletta does work for PvP. So does the other one. I forget the other guy's name. Um, but I know he works for, for PvP as well. Overall, yeah, if you already have all those Supreme Plus Thrifted, you are crushing it with the content that, that's going in there. You still have other things to do. And again, I'm paying a little bit of attention to this, but not a ton. I think we have to come through here and we get, I think we get attacked. Yeah, there we go. So as we see, yeah, we get attacked. Perhaps the mushrooms nearby will help. There we go, it was a trap. And I think we press this, get out of the way, boom. This is gonna run through all of those camps. And again, I don't even, it's been a long time um, since we've come through here that we've actually done the, these old school legendary. These are of course are the legendary epic ones um, to go through. So I think enter the tunnel brings us over here, bring us right to the portal. So of course we kind of got in between, look at all the camps guys. This is insane if you go through there and a lot of players try to fight through there. But I don't think we missed anything, but that's okay. Yeah, going in here, you have to make sure you do these. I, I stress it all the time. A lot of people skip these because remember, you also do have to have a the unlocked hero. So again, a lot of players were kind of stuck because they didn't have the unlocked hero or they didn't have one copy of the awakened hero, meaning that it, it takes a long time. It does take a long time to get through these game modes. But going through, that's exactly why I wanted to. There you go. So food, red chest, cores, and pose. Yes, food all the time till 18. That again is a recommendation, but that's what I did. So if you guys remember when we were kind of talking about building up the beasts themselves, is I went through and I farmed um, beast food out of everything. Every single thing, including the Noble Society, I took the baits. Out of the shops, we were buying the baits every day. Every event that we had, we bought the baits. Even looking at every single place that we could literally get bait, um, we bought the bait and we bought the bait on a regular basis over and over and over to the point of, you know, when we actually got to have the ability, and I'm looking at kind of the, the cheat sheet here to get through, but having the ability once I got to 18, because once you get to 18, and this is a big thing to remember with the beast, is once you get to 18, that's it. You're done. You, you don't have to worry about building them anymore. You don't have to worry about focusing on them. There is really not much you do with anything at all when it comes to the beast. I go in there and just build out when I do have the summons, which we'll do in just a minute. Um, but when I have some extra baits in there, I just do whatever summons are there. Because of course, when a new beast comes out, I'm gonna get the beast automatically to level 18, which again is the big, big reason why you do want to build them out in their entirety. So here's 16, of course, we get the mushrooms, we get a couple more portals in here. 
kind of remember in this a little bit, not really too much. Um, but yeah, guys, if you play AFK Journey, it, it's really cool. I'm just a little worried about how slow it is. So when you get to a certain point of the game, um, it, it's pretty slow to make progression if you are free to play, if you're not putting anything in there. It's, it's a little bit cumbersome um, to get through. And I think, again, I think we're almost about through all of this. Then we'll get into our summons. But Abyssal Expedition is done. Super excited about that. We got our five kills. We actually came in with Adventure Run at 17th. So very, very happy with the progression that we made out of there. Um, coming in the top 20. Like we said, going into it, we wanted to come in the top 20. And we did that. We came into the top 20. That was exactly what we wanted to do. And again, we did it. We, we did exactly what we were planning to do coming in. Could have done a little better. I know personally, I could have done a lot better within the Abyssal Expedition. Um, pathing, pathing was, was the big thing in there. So let's get out of here. Let's go jump. It was my fault. And again, going through this story mode, the emblem is glowing and there is the Awakened version. Boom. That is where we see the Awakened version for the first time. And again, if you remember old school, um, the original when when we got her awakened, this was the big, big part where we went through. I think we have a couple camps to go through. I don't think we can skip these, but I think there's a couple more camps to go through and then that should be the last chest on that side. And there we go. So we got the awake. Well, it, um, awakened hero and regular hero can't be in the same formation. I was going to say, I thought we started it Maybe, uh, maybe something happened with the internet. I I'm wondering if something dropped out or, yeah, cause that, that's a pretty big delay. We've seen it, I I've been having issues sometimes and I think through blue stacks. Um, will I stream AFK Journey? Yes, Kooky. So I I'm gonna have to think of a day and I'm thinking probably Wednesdays um, that I'm gonna go through and stream AFK Journey. Now I also do stream Yard um, with the finance channel. So I, I think, Kooky, I think Wednesdays, um, I'm gonna have to talk to the wife about it and see, but I'm thinking Wednesday, um, I'm gonna stream AFK Journey on like a Wednesday night, possibly change up a day here or there, but overall, I think that's gonna be a good way to stream AFK Arena on our Sundays like our normal streams, and then doing AFK Journey a little bit during the week. I'm gonna have to see. I'm gonna have to see exactly what that, uh, exactly what that looks like. Unable to advance. Oh, we gotta go ahead and use the medicine. Boom, there we go. So we'll drink, you feel well rested. That the last one, I think it is. One 11 of 11, it is. Like I said, we had a lot to get through in here, guys, and we are just literally grinding it out. So we went through, we got all of that done. In here, we got the Babbling Brook done, the Misty Valley is caught up, Bountiful Trials are done, Perilous Abyss is done. So we got a lot of it done. All right, so that is very, very good to see that we knocked some of this out. I don't know if the sweep is done, which I know I haven't actually run this. So big shout out to the uh, to the individuals that are running this every day because I know I've been really, really slacking on it, but we'll have to come in here. We'll grind out some of the arena. Again, we came in 65. I, I am very happy that we came in 65. Let's hop over, let's do some summons. I know I have a lot of stuff in the bags that we can actually use because of course this was the weekly reset. Yeah. Good luck, good luck with talking to my wife. I know as much as I like doing YouTube and have a ton of fun with it, um, she doesn't view it as a real job, unfortunately. And it's something that is just kind of fun that I do on the side. So yeah, definitely fun conversations with that as always. There we go, guys. There are the po coins that we have. And I think let's go ahead and run one in here. We'll do our purchase in the shop. That'll give us some more resources, which we're doing. Any good teams for the Lost Spire? So pretty much any teams, like here I ran um, Liberta and Lucila with Athalia. Um, it, it's hard for the Spire teams because essentially it's gonna be who you have legend. That's the big thing. So of course, like we said earlier, with the Spire, there will be a point where your runes are going to overpower the boss, essentially that you're gonna be able to burn down the boss pretty quick, just based on having those runes built up. It, it shouldn't be difficult once you get to a point. I mean, very similar to what we see um, with the Temple Rift. So of course with the Rift, when you start out, it's very difficult to get through the Rift. As you make progression, as you continue to kind of grind it, it gets easier and easier. And then you get to, to a point where 
it's pretty easy to go through the rift essentially because you've gained more than enough buffs. And, and that's really the big part of it. So let's hop in here, let's pop open. We have a lot of chests in here that we can go ahead. So let's see, so we're buying essence and getting essence on a regular basis. What do we got here though? Uh, red chest, we're still stockpiling red chest. We have our reward card right there, more red chest. Then of course here, we're going all in for cores. I'm gonna have to do some furniture summons too. Cores in this one, this one we're actually going for the amplifying emblems. And these come out of um, the treasure scramble. So these are actually out of the treasure scramble that a lot of these that we're seeing. But there's 19 of 19, bringing us a lot closer to getting another level there. Then again, we can add another level right here to our elder tree, bringing them up to 205, 183 on our tank tree. We're getting it done. We are getting it done. Wife doesn't see it a real job until the big bucks. Maybe third eye, maybe someday. What's going on, Alfred? Us, Lost Fire, yeah. Uh, Liberta Lucila, Lyca Demia, Awaken to Tell You. There you go. So a lot of different formations in there. Any news about the collab? Not yet. A lot of times with the collaborations, um, they try their best to keep everything 100% under wraps, Alfred Us. Um, so maybe soon, and I'm, I'm thinking really soon, we're gonna see some stuff. Again, Data Mine didn't really reveal anything about the Awakened Heroes that we were kind of thinking or that we were kind of wondering about. So again, we're gonna have to see exactly what that looks like. But let's hop in here, let's pop open all of these, these heroes. Let's see if we can get anything out of here. Of course, we have one Superb Stone, which gives us Nemora. Not really anything there. We have 33 Rare Stones, which is crazy because those are a lot of recycles. Three of our Elite Stones, of course, we got these out of the Misty Valley. Boom, we got Mishka, but again, that is all gonna be recycles. So really what we're looking for at this point, even with our 42 scrolls right here, is any copy of an Awakened Hero. That, that's really it. Celestial or Hypo could work out. There's a copy of Trishia. But overall, that's really all that we're looking for at this point is seeing our shiny gold or shiny yellow that pops up in this game mode to continue building these out. Because again, everything else that we have in here, we just recycle. And we recycle every single week, which is kind of crazy, but we have enough heroes and we're getting enough copies of heroes that we can recycle. Now, of course, with the diamonds, we are saving the diamonds for Eugene. We are saving the Stargazer Scrolls for Eugene. Everything is waiting for Eugene. Uh, who does this data mining? So there's a couple. Now, AFK Inside, if you guys are familiar at all with AFK Inside uh, stuff, um, they do the data mining. They used to do it all of the, the crazy, yeah, AFK Inside. They, they do a lot of the data mining um, for AFK Arena. I'm not 100% sure exactly how they do it, but they usually have things two or three days or weeks or months in advance for what is coming up. Like they leaked the collaboration between um, with The Witcher, with, with Geralt and Yennefer long before anyone had literally heard anything of it. Um, again, I know there's some players that do the data mining, but a lot of the information that is over on the Chinese servers Again, our, usually you get leaks, you get, yeah, you get early exposure to it. So here we're at 510 with the ones we got out of there. And again, when the next Awakened Hero comes out, we're gonna be able to build the new hero in his or her entirety, which is cool. That's really, really cool to see that we're gonna have the ability to build them. And then again, another copy of Trishia, just building these out. Because even looking big picture at the hero that we have or what we have left in AFK Arena, we have one, two, three with literally just Vika. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's it. We have all of the regular four faction heroes. We need seven more copies and they will be maxed out in their entirety. And those of course are just gonna come through regular summons. I'm not focusing on any diamonds. I'm not doing the desired hero summons. Um, we're just gonna save those. And of course the resources, we're saving all of our cores right here, all of our shards. And then of course the choice emblems and the emblem chest. We have almost 700 of these, which again is kind of crazy, but with the ones that we got out of here, this is to build up Eugene. And I think Eugene is gonna be the next 40. I, I know we talked about it a little bit earlier. Who was gonna be the next plus 40 signature item? It might be Eugene depending on who they actually build because this one actually does a pretty strong thing. When the lesser magic cores explode, it permanently reduces magic resistance five points up to 10, 10 times, which of course is 50 points. So this could make a big difference. And again, 
I want to see the big picture impact of Eugene um, and how he's going to work in AFK Arena, which is going to be cool. I see someone said there was going to be an Awaken Gwen. I don't know. So the big thing, if you're saying Awaken Gwen, we've already had the Awaken version of Lucius. So Bobo, th that is something um, I don't think maybe in 2025 we would see the Awaken version of Gwen because this year we only have three more Awaken heroes, a Mauler, a Wilder, and a Graveborn hero. And that will conclude 2024 in its entirety for our Awaken heroes. Because of course we have our three Awaken heroes here. We have both of these Awaken heroes. We have two here, we have two here. And then we have three Celestials, three Hypos, which means we are literally missing three Awakened Heroes, the Maulers, the Wilders, and the Graveborns. So I don't think that's going to be the case, Bobo, that we're going to see the Awakened version of Gwen unless we're looking at 2025. Uh, my Flora is Mythic plus two copies away from Ascended. Should I swap to Lucila? Should I wait to get Florida one star or swap out Lucretia? Um, and if I do wait, will I have enough time? Probably not. You might, you might be able to pull one more copy but ultimately, if you swap Flora for Lucila, because Lucila, I think, is the, probably the one that you have built, um, should I wait to get Flora to one star or swap out Lucretia? Are you using Lucretia? Pull the trigger. That, that's the question. So, guys, and again, thinking big picture with hero swaps. So, if you have a hero like Lucretia that a lot of players built Lucretia up to a plus 80 engraving, plus 100 engraving, Think of big picture, if you're not using the hero anymore, is it gonna be worth, let's say, swapping a Lucretia to go ahead and swap to like a Lucila? Is it gonna be worth it? Lucila being used in a lot of different content, one of the top tier heroes to build. Lucretia not being used as of right now, nowhere that I know. Um, yeah, depending on how well and how big you have the hero built up, a swap could definitely be in mind. And of course, with anything when it comes to the swapping. So again, thinking when it comes to the swapping itself is very worst case scenario, something happens and there's literally a game changing, you know, thing that happens where, and again, it doesn't want to scroll. I don't know what, what's going on, but game changing happens. Lucretia is now the absolute best, best in slot in a couple different teams. You build the hero again. Th that's really it. it, is when you get in there, um, you would just have to, you just have to go ahead and build the hero again. Again, worst case scenario. Uh, what team do you use for LC? Um, what do you mean for LC? Oh, the the. are you talking about the PvP? PvP I don't do. So even here, if you're talking about the Legends Championship, um, I did not qualify. And again, looking here, I, I might have been able to qualify depending on who I'm fighting. Most of these, I can't beat anyone in here. I do not PvP at all, even looking at my formations. I don't even know how old these are because I, I don't really do this. There's our stall team in there. But yeah, the, the PVP, the Legends Championship, I don't even worry about, I don't even bother with at all, Martin. I, I do not at all. A new hero has voice lines about her, which is the where the rumors came from. Oh, maybe. That, that might be true. Like I said, it might be in the future. Can I get advice on who I should build or stop building the All Father? Uh, check it out, N Nostalgia. Um, check it out on Discord. Discord is, is the place, yeah, for, for where we, we're looking at comps. It's very, very hard to do it in a live stream, to do it through chat. It's very hard. If I can see who you have over on Discord, it makes it incredibly easy because I can literally pinpoint the heroes that you have and that you don't have, which again, makes a big difference. Let's do some furniture summons in here though. Uh, my Lucretia be became Olgath, no regrets. Exactly, Marco. And that's the big thing, is when you look at a hero, you have to see who you're using and who you're not using. That That's the big thing where if you're benching or if you sidelined a fully built max out Ainz, that is sidelined, that is a hero that you haven't used for a ton of different content, swap it to someone else, guys. I, I really, really have to stress it. If there's a hero that you're not using for an incredible amount of time, that is the heroes you want to be swapping if you have them built. That's the other big thing to remember. Like I said, Ainz, a lot of players did swaps because a lot of players had Ainz built. A lot of players also swapped out um, Lucretia because again, Lucretia not being used in a lot of content. But overall, if the hero is not being used, swap the hero out. That That is the big thing. Yeah, Matria is good in the treasure scramble, but again, 
If you look at the Awakened version of Athelia with utility-wise versus Matria, I would rather have Athelia than Matria, even though I know, again, Matria PvP-wise um, being used. Any update on Kelthin? So Kelthin, not really doing well. So, so overall, I built out Kelthin and I built out Kelthin um, pretty early. Not seeing utility really with Kelthin very much at all. Um, very, very niche when it comes to the hero itself. Kind of disappointed with the build. You know, we did build him out quite a bit, but honestly, kind of disappointed with the build that we have on Kelthin because again, that's a hero that we're not seeing used anywhere. I, I Again, Kelthin, I, I don't see... And I'm hoping that's going to change possibly with some different formations with a little bit of more utility. But overall, yeah, not, not really being used very much. I think when I'm finished with Liberta, I'm going to do Lava Tune. Yeah, Lava Tune and then look at Damia, look at Lucila. Those are the big ones. Is it worth swapping Wukong for Vithiel? Yeah, Vithiel is good. And again, if you're not using Wukong at all, which I hope you're not, um, yeah, you, you definitely want to do the swap. And again, a lot of players will just swap Wukong to Vathiel and then build Wukong again out of the shop. That, that's really the, the good way to do it, um, to, to really build it out. But a lot of the heroes within the shop, unfortunately, we're not seeing a lot of utility anymore. So what do we got? We got Max right here, Max right here. This literally only leaves us very, very few pieces of furniture that are going to be left for this hero. And again, once we max this out, so we have what, two, four pieces left. And Athelia will be built. I think it's the same here. No, not, not with Leica. So let's build out this one a little bit further. Again, building out this haste a little bit further. But a lot of these heroes, again, we are starting to max out. And some of them we almost have to the 36 furniture. 32 right there, 31. Again, once we hit this 36, they are maxed in their entirety. We'll swap these to some other heroes and just continue it. Now, again, Kelthin, we're not seeing used a lot of places. I'm kind of disappointed in there, which we have, what, one piece right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 pieces of furniture for Eugene. Still just waiting to ascend him, which is coming very, very soon. What's going on, Wantalu? Thank you for joining us for the stream. Uh, swap Baden for Athelia. My Wukong was neglected because I had a priority in red chest. Baden is a tough one, Spiro, because Baden is used a lot of places. Yes, Baden is still used... Um, in some content, quite a bit of content when it comes to Night Nightmare Corridor and Cursed Realm. Um, and that's why I really, really caution you on some of the swaps. And this is where it kind of gets, it, it just kind of gets a lot tougher because of the builds that we have in there. Because essentially, let's say you're swapping Baden. Um, if you're swapping Baden for Athelia, Athelia is going to do incredibly well within the Celestial Tower your progression in the Greyborn Tower without that Awakened version of Baden is going to be very, very hard to go through. It, it's 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 going to be difficult to make progression if you're not running Baden within that tower. And that, again, is where a lot of players are kind of getting stuck is when they do the swap. It, it's not really, really worth it um, because, again, you're going to hurt the tower progression a ton. Is maxing out furniture as a free-to-play? no. No, guys, do not, and I repeat, do not max out furniture um, as a free-to-play player. There are so many heroes in AFK Arena, and even if you're building and putting furniture on some of these off heroes, it will really make a big difference for tower progression as you're going through and building these out. And I think we got a star on Bron, which we did. So with these heroes, I have 9,000 right here. I'm going to go ahead and build up Bron a little bit. There we go. And again, I'm using these heroes. And again, I don't recommend building up Bron a little bit further. Um, I did for the dancers as well because we have enough resource generation that is coming in. We actually have the ability to build a bunch of those heroes out. And then we get resources out of the ship. I don't know why it doesn't ping me. But as you can see, we continue to build these out. The dancer is giving us some more resources right there with another summon. And again, we're building out all of the heroes because of where this account is in conjunction with AFK Arena. We have so many resources coming in on a regular basis because we still put a little bit of money in here. Um, is maxing out, yeah, maxing out furniture, no, not worth it. Stay at the nine of nine. Uh, same as SI50E80, yeah, too expensive. 
When you start getting even to the plus 40 signature item, it's kind of crazy. Um, but a lot of them, even the E80, E100, it is so expensive to go in there. You know if Awaken Leica's SPFX still works after she dies? I believe so. I believe the Awaken version of Leica's SP effect will still work after she is dead. Um, very similar to all of the other ones um, with the Awaken Heroes is the SP effect a takes effect when they first enter the formation. And that's it. I, I believe again that it stays on there forever. What's going on, Japard? Thank you for joining us for the stream. And I think we're almost, wow, it's already almost two o'clock already. That is insane how fast time goes through here. Whenever I push the faction towers, I'm disgusted by how bad factions are themselves. I'm at 450 deficiency in the campaign, but can hardly beat a 200 deficiency. Yes. So when you look at that, Marco, it's the synergy. So when you think of all of the heroes in here and specifically breaking out the factions, most of them, like looking at your maulers, um, looking at the wilers, most of them do not have synergy within the faction itself. It requires some of the outside heroes to work incredibly well. Even looking at the towers where I am right here, 176, I think I'm at what, 870? So we have, yeah, I mean, 200 would bring us to what, 1070? So we're about 250. But going in here, it takes a long time. Literally, it, it takes a long time to grind these. I turn these on and we do this every day. I cannot stress how important it is. Going through here, I might go through one single stage in the faction tower in the course of 30 to 45 minutes to get through one and only one single floor. It, it's kind of crazy. It, it's insane. Again, going through here, it takes a long, long, long time, especially when you start getting to two teams, when you start getting to three teams, just like what Marco said, it, it's a long term. Is it worth taking heroes to 50? No, Latan, not at all. The cost is astronomical. And I believe similar to 30 to 40, when you're taking a hero from 30 to 40, you can build up, and I believe it's four other heroes to a plus 30 signature item. The exact same going to a 50 signature item is if you're going to a signature item 50 or a signature, um, if you're going to that 50, you can build up, and I believe it's three other heroes to a 40, which essentially is going to make the big difference. I built Kelthin early, a bit disappointed that I haven't found a place yet. Yes, I am in the same boat, Jack. So I am two copies away from having Kelthin uh, completely done. Hope he finds a place, but as of now, yes, we do not have any place for Kelthin. We are not finding a place for Kelthin, which really, really sucks because if you invested a bunch of Stargazer Scrolls and Diamonds like I did, there's not a place for him at this point, Jack, which again is pretty sad to see. Hopefully we'll we'll find a place, but if we don't, it's gonna be a hero that is essentially gonna be used for swaps a little bit further down the road. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do the um, free membership gifting. I almost forgot this time. So there we go. So there is the free membership and that goes out to Usta again with the membership. And I love seeing the hippos like what Marco has right to, next to the name. That is the membership to the channel itself. We do this every single time we do the live streams. And when we stream AFK Journey, I'm gonna do the exact same. We're gonna go in there. Should I save my Stargazer cards? Yes. So Yoshi, the, the big thing with the Stargazer cards as of today, guys, Eugene will be out Tuesday. So we know that Eugene is going to be out on Tuesday. Those are going to be the cards that you want to build out Eugene to add that one star on him because of course, when it comes to building out Eugene, I'm really gonna be a game-changing hero and we're gonna be able to see him in his entirety, which there we go. So we beat what, seven, I think we beat 75. That gave us our Stargazer Scrolls. Um, so again, we're just gonna continue grinding through all of these towers. But as of right now, really for a couple different things, guys, hold on to the Stargazer Scrolls, hold on to the time emblems because we don't know what's coming down the pipeline with the fifth anniversary. Worst case scenario, you know, you wait a week or two, the new hero is released. It's a hero that you're not gonna build. Boom, you can jump right back. You can build out whoever you want to. Going to be very, very easy to do. But if you spend them now on heroes that might be good or could be okay, I would save them Yoshi, just like I said. Wait to see who is the next one that is coming. Could be an absolute hero that is broken like an Ainz or a Lucretia um, or a Liberta that you have to be built out and you have to build out super fast. 
you want to make sure that you're sitting on enough resources at least to build out the next hero. Now, again, kind of have to keep that with, with kind of a, a grain of salt because if you're sitting on a ton of resources just like summons, your account could be making a lot more progression if you utilize those resources to actually make progression versus sitting on them. So there, there's kind of a fine line. But again, knowing that the fifth anniversary is right around the corner and what Lilith is going to bring to AFK Arena, wait on the resources. That's exactly what I'm doing. I have more than enough resources to build out Eugene with the engraving and also with the furniture. Once we get them all built up on Tuesday, I'm gonna start stockpiling resources knowing what is coming down the pipeline. Because if we're getting a double dimensional hero, which again is rumored that it's gonna be one dimensional with the crossover, it could be two new dimensional heroes, kind of like we've seen Joker Queen, um, Ein Zalbeto, Rem Emilia. It could be two more heroes coming to AFK Arena, which is the other reason why I focus, and I'll show you, we'll, we'll actually exit out of this, but the reason why when I come through the store, I buy out all of our, um, right here, emblems of space, right here, emblems of space, right here. Every single time that I can use my emblems of space versus using my red chest versus using all my epic chests, I want to get them and I want to build them out in their entirety. So I am focused on red chests, or excuse me, the emblems of space entirely. Already have 350 of these sitting. And again, this is going to be the, the counter to having to use all of those red chests when we do get the next dimensional heroes. Because let's be honest, we know the dimensional heroes are coming. The question is, are the dimensional heroes gonna come with the dimensional tower attached? Which would be, of course, absolutely game changing. I would love to see it now if they do roll out the dimensional tower and they roll out that eighth faction, it would be kind of insane to see. But again, so much stuff that is gonna be coming to AFK Arena, so stay tuned, guys. We still have a ton of stuff that is coming. AFK Journey have a ton of content that is coming on that game as well. Really, really cool to see, but that is going to do it for the live stream for today. And again, I'm gonna have to come up with a date where we can stream AFK Journey as well. That way everyone can hop in there as well. But again, guys, thank you guys for joining me for a stream today. Love being able to chat with you guys when it comes to AFK Arena, when it comes to AFK Journey. We're gonna have to see exactly what it does bring down the pipeline based on what we have with this fifth anniversary. And of course, we have a lot more resources in the pipeline that are going to come from Lilith itself. Um, yes, they, they have said there, there's a lot of stuff that is in the works that it is going to be a big update. I feel like the next couple could be some really, really big updates, including possibly some new game modes into AFK Arena. So again, guys, thank you guys for joining me for the stream. Have a great Sunday. Get outside. Here, it's actually warm where we can open a door or window, so it's cool. Again, thank you guys for joining me. Have a great weekend. And as always, thank you guys for watching.